Hey everyone and welcome back to Scarlet Sprites. This is my first crack at trying to put a video together since the birth of my son Neo, so we'll see how this goes, particularly how many takes this is going to need to get through without background noises. But hell, it's amazing that I even have time to do this, so let's not waste any of that and dive right into what is essentially just a reflection on the Mr. FPGA project. I've been talking a lot about arcade stuff recently, and so I wanted to come back to something that's maybe a little bit more mainstream, and I wanted to talk subjectively about how owning a Mr. has changed some of how I game and the setup that I was used to rolling with. So a little background here first. Like many of you, I think I watched videos and would see posts about Mr. and hear people talk about it like it was some savior to retro gaming. I probably don't need to tell you that I'm a little jaded on new products in general to retro gaming. There's just so much out there already. There are tons of options for playing games, and it seems like every month someone or some company is releasing another new peripheral mod or piece of plastic for retro gaming. And look, we can celebrate the positives and say how fortunate we are to be living in such a time where all this stuff is available as options, but I already told you I'm a little bit of a pessimist and quite honestly, there is just so much junk out there that I kind of cease paying attention to whatever the big announcement of the week is that everyone is falling all over. But you know, in the case of the Mr., it just never really seemed to die out. I saw so many posts and people singing its praises that my curiosity was genuinely piqued. And you're talking to a guy that loves original hardware and you know, at one time I collected consoles and console games and cartridges, but the talk about this just wasn't going to die out. And the people who were discussing the Mr. were people in retro gaming that I respected. Now, not necessarily content creators, although some of them were, but more importantly, just people whose opinions and takes on things I respected because of their contributions to the community in one way or another. So having said all of that, I was still looking at this like it was a cool thing, but good lord, I already have 19 different ways to play Zelda. Do I need to have another one? And I think that that's a really key point looking back on things a year ago. That was one of the things that really kept me from having a lot of interest in Mr. It was seemingly just a redundant device for a lot of enthusiasts who already have a variety of different solutions at their disposal, including original hardware. But then I got it. It was gifted to me and I'm glad that it was because I may have continued to stall if it hadn't been sent over. The first thing I noticed and liked was how much smaller it was than what I had expected. It's relatively tiny, doesn't take up much room, and depending on your casing, it can be very subtle. And these are all pluses in my book as I'm trying to declutter space and have things be just a little bit more simple. On that note, let's talk about the reality of what has happened with my analog consoles. I own a Super NT and a Mega SG, and you can also see Terra Onion's Mega SD there as well. And I'll be blunt, I don't turn these consoles on anymore. I just don't. I'm someone who has historically liked to keep things neat and organized. I like that these are standalone consoles and the concept of having a dedicated machine for each system appeals to my OCD a bit. I like when things are kept in their respective lanes. And this goes back to why I thought the Mr. would be redundant. But the reality is that it's the analog consoles that have become redundant. I mean, really, these are FPGA solutions that are running flashcards. It's just ROMs being fed to an FPGA board. How's that any different than the Mr. except it can have one little box plugged in instead of two? When I finally get around to straightening this room up, I'm boxing up the analogs and putting them away. I just don't use them. I also rarely ever sell hardware. I had a Duo RX that was component and region modded. It wasn't a system from my childhood. I'm not overly nostalgic for the TurboGrafx-16 or PC Engine. They have a fantastic library that I've loved discovering the past decade or so, but now I can do that accurately on the Mr. Speaking of the component mod, 
Any original hardware that I had been using needed to go through Mike Chi's excellent RetroTINK 5X. But with the Mister, I don't really have a need for such a scaler. It outputs razor sharp pixels via HDMI. Now to be clear, I have several use cases remaining for the RetroTINK. There are some cores that just aren't available on Mister yet, like N64, if you care at all about that. I also still occasionally fire up my consoleized Neo Geo, and I have some arcade capture use cases, but I mean, make no mistake about it, the RetroTINK is awesome. But if you're simply looking to play some games on a modern display, you don't need a scaler with the Mister, which is another beautiful thing about it. You can really get away with just a power cord, an HDMI cable, and a controller. Very clean, clutter free. Now I did just mention arcade stuff, and that's an area of particular interest for me with the Mister. This is where some additional versatility of the device comes into play with the Mister Cade. Now I know not everyone is going to want to drop their Mister inside of an arcade machine, but I think it's really awesome that such an option for this device even exists. There are other products ways to do this outside of the Mister Cade, but you know I love the development effort behind the Mister Cade and all those find people who contributed to that, and I strongly endorse the Mr. Cade as the option for playing Mr. inside of a cabinet. And so let's expand on that a bit. I love the products that Darksoft has developed and brought to market for arcade gamers. I used to say that the Darksoft CPS2 Multi was perhaps the greatest bang for buck in arcade gaming. I still run mine inside of my Capcom Big Blue cabinet. Recently though, Darksoft CPS1 Multi came to market. I know that even five years ago, I would have jumped on that. It would have been something I would have been absolutely jacked about and tried to order day one. But now, with a Mr. and a Mr. Cade, I don't really feel the need to spend upwards of $900 just to play CPS1 games on original hardware. Now keep in mind, this is a subjective opinion, and I fully recognize that others still do, and for those guys, it's awesome that the Darksoft solution exists. For me though, I just kind of hit this point where the accuracy of the FPGA cores are enough for me. Mister yields a pretty great experience with games like Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, Street Fighter, and Final Fight. And I personally don't feel like I have to spend hundreds of more dollars to play those titles on a multi. Mister is great. It surpasses what I would consider good enough, and ultimately here again, it's eliminating redundancy in my setups. I suppose the other cool obvious thing to mention here is that the Mister sees pretty frequent updates. Talented people in the hobby are often working on improving existing cores and also developing new ones. There are some rather pricey arcade boards that I'd never spend the money on these days, which I thankfully have access to on the Mister. I can choose to play them on my television with a basic Mister setup, or on a genuine arcade cabinet with the help of the Mr. Cade. The fact that this is an ever evolving product and that so much has happened just in the time that I've owned a Mr. is really promising and exciting. I mean, if everything stopped today and we only ever had what is currently available, I'd be more than satisfied with my Mr. and I'd emphatically recommend it. But amazingly, this thing is seeing some great additions Maybe most notably the PlayStation and Saturn cores, which are now available as well. This thing really is the perfect all-in-one device that consolidates so many needs down to just one box. There's so much flexibility with controllers, including the ability to use originals via snack adapters. And from a creator standpoint, you have one HDMI out to worry about for captures and streaming. All in all, this thing is just versatile. It has an expanding library of cores, it eliminates clutter, makes content creation easy, and is just simply a sensational accessory for anyone who is into arcade games. I'm really trying hard not to have this be the next get a Raspberry Pi device, but it's just hard not to gush over how awesome this thing is, and I really just wanted to share that I'm really more in love with it now than I was even a year ago. And I would have missed out on this had I followed my original traditional line of thinking. So if you're on the fence, I definitely give it a shot. I know the DE10 Nanos are a little bit more pricey now and stock is fluctuating, but it's worth it to keep an eye out if you're interested in making your gaming life easier. 
truly, I really love this thing and I think that most of you who follow the channel probably would as well. Be sure to check out Mr. Add-ons for purchasing units or accessories. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and join. And I will catch you all next time. Later, guys.